Do you hear that clinking sound? Almost like pieces of glass clinking together? That's what a good batch of biochar sounds like. This batch not only sounds good, it also looks good. The wood is charred black all the way through and there are no white ashes in sight. I've made four batches of biochar since I first started experimenting with it a few weeks ago. I'm far from an expert on the subject, but I feel I've come far enough along to make this video, not as a how-to, but just to share my experiences so far. Most of the biochar ovens you see on YouTube are made with 55 gallon drums. Though I'd love to have an oven this size, I know it wouldn't go over very well with my neighbors or the city. So I thought I'd model my oven after some of the two chamber biochar ovens I've seen on YouTube, but on a smaller and less conspicuous scale. Fortunately, I already had two stainless steel pots that I thought might do the trick. The smaller of the two is a one and three quarters gallon pot that functions as an inner retort chamber. This pot holds the wood chips and sticks that are being converted into biochar through pyrolysis. I cut off the handles on this pot so it would fit nicely into the larger pot. I also drilled three small holes in the bottom of the pot. These holes are probably not necessary but don't seem to be causing any harm given the high quality of the biochar being produced. The larger three gallon pot holds both the inner retort chamber and the wood that will be burned in order to heat that inner retort chamber. Two modifications were made to this pot. First I drilled one half inch holes along the bottom. These holes will draw oxygen up into the oven and enable the wood in the outer chamber to burn. Second, I cut a hole in the pot's lid the air and gases will vent out of this hole and up through the chimney. The chimney consists of an 8 to 6 inch reducer attached to a 6 to 4 inch reducer attached to 2 feet of vent pipe. The secondary air holes drilled in the 8 to 6 inch reducer bring in oxygen to help burn off residual pyrolysis gases before they exit the chimney. The chimney will create a stack effect or siphon effect that will draw oxygen and pyrolysis gases up through the chimney. When making biochar, the drier the feedstock, the better. The biochar oven will produce much less smoke and pyrolysis will happen much faster with drier stock. So I dried the wood chips and sticks on trays in the basement for a couple of weeks before using them. There's a dehumidifier running in the room which helped them dry more quickly. Before adding the feedstock to the oven, I used a half inch screen to remove the smaller particles of wood. The smaller particles could potentially limit oxygen flow in the outer chamber and prevent the burn from getting hot enough to produce pyrolysis in the inner chamber. First I loaded the inner retort chamber with feedstock. Then I placed the outer retort chamber upside down over the inner retort as shown here. I pressed the inner retort firmly against the bottom of the outer chamber and turned the oven right side up. You can see how the inner chamber will have limited oxygen. This oxygen limited environment makes pyrolysis possible and prevents the feedstock from burning down to ash. Next I loaded the outer chamber with feedstock, which provided the fuel to heat the contents of the inner retort. I set up my oven on a concrete walkway far enough away from the house and other structures to not pose a fire hazard. I also kept a bucket of water nearby in the event that I needed to quench the fire. I used a little isopropyl alcohol to get the flame started. Isopropyl alcohol burns very cleanly which enabled me to get the fire started with very little smoke. Once the fire was established, I put the lid and chimney on the oven. The chimney creates a siphon effect which draws oxygen up through the holes in the bottom of the oven which feeds the fire in the outer chamber. As you can see, the oven is burning very cleanly and producing no visible smoke at this time. This is very important to me because I want to minimize the amount of pollution and annoy the neighbors as little as possible. If the wood chips weren't dry, the oven would have produced much more smoke until the water vapors burned off. When the feedstock in the inner retort chamber gets hot enough, it starts releasing gases through the three small holes in the top of the retort and through its opening on the bottom. These gases mix with oxygen and ignite and help burn the wood in the outer chamber. 
Again, because there is little oxygen in the inner retort chamber, the feedstock inside doesn't burn. It is converted to biochar through pyrolysis. In the secondary holes in the chimney, you can see the oxygen and gases igniting. The flames you see here aren't originating below. They're originating here, where the oxygen and pyrolysis gases combine and ignite. This is a clear indication that pyrolysis is happening. There is one small glitch with my biochar oven. There isn't enough room for sufficient fuel between the outer and inner chambers to complete the pyrolysis process. As a result, I have to add additional fuel during the burn. I'm careful to add only a small amount at a time. Adding a large handful of wood chips might smother the flames. A larger outer chamber would obviously solve the problem. But for now, I'm content to add some additional fuel during the burn. About two hours after I started the process, I see the first significant amount of smoke coming from the chimney. This happens as the last amount of fuel in the outer chamber is being consumed and it lasts for a few minutes. When I look through the holes in the chimney, I can see flickers of flames coming from the small holes in the inner retort chamber as the last of the pyrolysis gases are released and burned. Once the smoke and flames subsided, I removed the chimney and let the oven sit in the freezing cold overnight. Now is a good time to mention that biochar is quite dangerous in the hours after it's made. When exposed to oxygen, it can ignite when you least expect it. So it's very important to not handle biochar and to not bring it into the house until you know it's stable. The best way to do this is to submerge it in water. In my case, I left it outside overnight in the freezing cold and I didn't remove it from the oxygen limited inner retort until the next day. By the time I handled it and brought it into the house, it was ice cold and posed no potential danger. This is a small biochar oven, so it doesn't produce a whole lot of biochar in one batch. This batch produced one pound of biochar from the inner retort and this small amount of ash from the outer retort. That, in a nutshell, is how I've been making my homemade biochar. I'll be making another video in the near future to discuss in more detail exactly how I plan to use my homemade biochar in the garden. When it's done, I'll add a link to it here and in the description below. Also, if you'd like to learn more about what biochar is and what its benefits are, please see the video link at the end of this video and in the description below. Well, that's all for now. Thank you very much for watching. And until next time, remember, you can change the world one yard at a time.